Hey everybody, welcome back to the Droopy 10 Network for another unboxing and hands-on video. Today we're going to be checking out the generic branded version of the Tripod Mount Ring A2 for Canon lenses. Now Model A2 is the exact same designation Canon uses for their genuine version of the Tripod Mount Ring. And this ring is used to mount onto a 70 to 200 millimeter f4L telephoto lens. Both the image stabilized and non-stabilized versions. They use the same ring. And if you guys haven't already seen my hands-on video for the IS version of the lens, definitely check it out. There's going to be a link in the lower left-hand side. Just click that box and we'll take you to that video. And in that video, I briefly touch upon why there is a market for these generic ring adapters. And the reason basically is that Canon doesn't include one with their F4L telephoto lenses and they charge $150 to buy theirs separately. Yeah, no joke, guys. If you look at the usual suspects, Adorama, Amazon, B&H Photo, they all charge upwards of $130 to $150. Absolutely ridiculous when you consider that a tripod ring is nothing more than machine metal and a screw. So this right here is $13 from eBay. Let's see if there are any huge compromises. I like to think there aren't too many because I did my research when buying these, and I'll touch upon what things you gotta look for if you do go for a generic brand adapter. So first things first, this is JYC Photography. That's a brand you may recognize from a lot of sellers on eBay and Amazon Marketplace sellers. Uh, they sell a lot of generic accessories, many of which are of questionable quality, but uh, I looked at the description for this one. I think this one's one of their better products. And basically there are a few things you gotta look for when you do buy a generic brand adapter. The first thing is you gotta make sure it is fully made of metal. Uh, that seems kind of obvious, right? But believe it or not, there are some generic adapters out there that cost a few dollars less that are plastic. And that is just insane. The idea of mounting $1,500 of equipment onto a plastic mount ring is just, I mean, it's really not necessary to save those few dollars. You're already saving 100 something. So let's stick with metal here, please. And the Canon one, without saying obviously, is metal as well. Um, the next thing you want to look for is the velvet lining within the ring. The velvet lining is really important in making sure the ring does not damage your lens barrel. Because after all, the lens is made out of metal, so is this mount ring. And if you have metal on metal friction, that's going to cause scratches. Now, some people do complain that despite the velvet lining, some of these generic adapters still scratch the lens. And I believe the reason for that is because uh, the Canon, genuine Canon ring, uh, if you mount it onto the ring and tighten it, you can still rotate the lens to get the camera in portrait orientation or landscape orientation, which is a lot more convenient than doing that adjustment on your tripod. And so some people try to do that same thing with these generic adapters, but I believe perhaps the tolerance may not be as even throughout or uh, the velvet lining may not be as thick. So what happens is when they rotate, it will cause ring scratches on the barrel. Now, I haven't tried that on this ring and I don't plan on doing it. I just, you know, want to keep it safe. I don't want to take any risks by causing damage to my tripod or to my lens with a $13 mount ring. So for me, uh, just mounting it in landscape mode, keeping it there and not screwing around with it is the safest thing in my opinion. I'm just not going to bother with that. So if being able to switch quickly from landscape to, uh, you know, portrait is important for you, you're a professional, you shoot in a studio environment, you gotta make quick shots of your models and whatever. Yeah, I mean, just pay the $150. You probably aren't even watching this video anyways if you're one of those people. If you're a hobbyist like myself, you know, you you can be slow, you can be deliberate and patient about setting up your shot, no rush. Uh, you may not even use a tripod as often, then that's not really a big deal. Uh, just make the adjustment on your tripod. Next thing you wanna look for, is the closing mechanism. Now, I'm gonna put up a picture here on the right-hand side to show you another generic adapter. This is a very popular one on eBay, and it's very recognizable with the red lettering on the back. Yes, they use a copyright violation Canon logo. Same with this one, too. I don't know how these guys get away with it, but uh, basically, that one's very popular and often, uh, oftentimes a few dollars less. And I would not get that version. The reason why is because, if you can imagine for a second, that screw, failing or not being tightened, you forgot, whatever, the lens would actually push down using gravity onto the ring and actually push open that door, right? 
Just use your imagination. I can't really show you because I don't have that ring. But on this one, if gravity were to push down onto this ring, it actually would not just easily swing the door open because there is uh, just a little bit of overrun here with this metal. It's like a catch mechanism. It's not gonna push open this ring. Now, of course, if you have this ring in portrait mode, nothing's gonna save you there. But at least in landscape mode, this is a much safer design. And so when you do purchase a generic adapter from various secondary market sources, check out the pictures, make sure the sellers are held accountable to the ones they use. Um, I would not go for that mount adapter for this very reason. So these are the three important things to look for when you're purchasing a generic ring. The brand itself doesn't really matter because a lot of other quote unquote brands still, uh, you know, make a similar design to this. It's all the same like manufacturers, just, you know, putting different names on their products. So Again, look at the description, look at the pictures. If there's anything vague about you know, what the seller is selling, ask or just move on. It's not worth saving an extra few dollars when you've already saved 130. Um, one more difference, well actually there's another couple of differences, but another one I wanna go over is the, uh, the screw hole here on the bottom of this mount ring. Uh, this is the base of the mount adapter and the way Canon does their uh, screw hole is it's completely machined out of a separate part, a separate piece of metal, probably steel, not really sure, that actually gets bolted onto the ring from the top with a couple of screws. Now that's obviously different from this one where the mounting grooves are directly machined into the bottom base of this mount ring. And what, you know, physical differences, I haven't done any objective testing to tell because I don't have the Canon genuine version, but I would probably venture to guess that the Canon version is a little more robust. The material they separately use to make that screw hole probably is not as uh, susceptible to wear and tear. Because of course, you know, if you uh, repeatedly mount and unmount a tripod plate to these things, you may wear out the grooves. This one probably would wear out faster. I don't know about that for sure, but for $13, I don't really think it's a big deal anyways. Um, just pointing it out as a difference. So, Let's check out what this is like on a lens. And it's just, you know, fairly simple, but, you know, be gentle with it if you are afraid of damaging your lens. This is true for the Canon one as well. Just sort of, you know, carefully set it on top of the ring. Oh, there we go. And then just close the door on top align it correctly to make sure the base of the ring is parallel with the bottom of the camera. And there you have it, just screw it shut. Now you guys may have noticed that I deliberately misaligned this line with this on the lens. The reason for that is, is that this line painted on here is actually not very accurate. It's not centered correctly. It's actually a millimeter or two off. Um, I noticed this because when I did align it, the bottom of the base of the tripod mount was not parallel with the camera. Now that is kind of an annoyance. I would have no doubt in my mind that the Canon version is aligned correctly. Um, you know, if you don't want to you know, deal with that, just mount it how, whatever, and then make the adjustment on your tripod, eyeball it, you know, when you're framing, whatever. But um, yeah, this is another concession you have to make with these generic tripods uh, or tripod rings. Another thing is the color is not quite the same as you may have noticed. The shade of off-white is just not as yellow as the Canon one. I almost feel like Canon's off-white color is like some secret recipe locked in a vault, much like uh, the recipe for KFC chicken. But uh, yeah, it's not the same. It, the finish isn't the same either. It's, it's got this texture on it that the, the lens itself doesn't. So if you're like an aesthetics guy, you care about the way your gear looks, is it worth $100 to you? Well, I don't know, I'm not gonna make that judgment. You decide for yourself. For me, it certainly was not, and I'm very happy with this tripod mount ring. So again, is it worth it? Absolutely, $13 gets you uh, pretty much 95% of the quality of the Canon Genuine uh, ring, but at like less than 10% of the price, right? So I'd say this is a good deal. But again, if you're a, if you're a professional, you shoot tripods all the time. Uh, efficiency and speed are, you know, of utmost importance to your workflow. You don't have time to just carefully, you know, diddle about with your tripod and stuff. 
no question, spend the $150. You got your budget to work with. For the rest of us who are just hobbyists, who may not use tripods all the time, who don't even shoot all the time, we shoot when we have the time to do so, don't waste your money on a tripod mount ring. This is good. Just make sure you look for the few things that I talked about in this video. Uh, so that's pretty much it for this hands-on. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please click that like and subscribe button to this channel for future Droopy Town Network unboxing videos. If you guys enjoyed it, I want to thank you for watching. Actually, if you didn't enjoy it, I want to thank you for watching too. Basically, thank you guys, as always, for watching and supporting Droopy Town Network, and I hope to see you guys later.